The screencast is the long-promised update to the Ajax white paper I did a couple of years ago showing how to do Ajax with NetBurner. And, and that white paper was showing the low-level mechanics and doing it all from scratch. And in this version, we're going to use the prototype library, um, which is included in the sample, but you can get it at the, the prototype website, which is right here, prototypejs.org. Um, and uh, hasn't been updated in a while, so the version that I've been using is still current 1.6.1. And let me just show you the the page hasn't changed very much, so we're going to hit the net burner here. So um, right here is where the AJAX is going on, and really there's just one AJAX call, one JSON object coming back, and I'm parsing it two different ways just so that I could demonstrate a technique. And we'll look at that in the code. Um, this is using a, a little diagnostic tool that takes a JSON object and then kind of breaks it down and shows it to you. And then this is a hard coded HTML table, but there's no data in the cells, so you'll see the JavaScript takes and puts the data inside the cells. And then just a few other techniques are, are on this page, including a, a form with postbacks. So you can see how to do, there's nothing special about doing postbacks with Ajax, but just to show that it's possible. And then uh, this actually, there's our serial port back here, and you can see these J's print out every time it sees a uh, an Ajax callback, and a dot every time it's in the idle loop. So if I change this debugging level to none, it turns that off. And now you can see nothing else is printing out. And I can turn that back on and submit. And they start back up. So let's go take a look at the um, HTML page. Index.htm is the main page here. Let me scroll up to the top. And I, you can look at this at, in, um, in the source code. Um, but the real work is done just by this include right here for the support scripts. And one other thing of, of particular interest here is this write system vars to JavaScript. This is actually going to write a variable called underscore machine state. So if you were looking just at the JavaScript code, you wouldn't see the declaration of that because it's done by the NetBurner itself. So that's, that's worth taking a quick look at. So let's just come back here. Let's turn on Firebug. It's in the head section is where it writes this. So you can see it's, it's done from the actual include. So right there. And in fact, if you take a look at this comment, you'll see this comment in the code, and you'll notice there's nothing but a call back above this. So there's the comment, and there's the function call. So that's how the machine state variable gets written. And then in the uh, call to su in support scripts, when this loads, there's some code that's right at the root level. It's going to create an object, um, sort of the way I like to write JavaScript in that JSON syntax. But um, this code will will execute right away. So there's the add event. So that's going to load in our on load event. It's going to add do load. So here's here's the actual call for add event. And I'm not going to go into detail. And then here's what do load does. And the most interesting part of of do load is start clock. And if we go down and take a look at start clock, it just sets up a timer so that periodically we do this call back to the the callback netburner method, which is right here. And then this is making the Ajax request. So using the library I wrote, everything I wrote is in SYN in the Syncore library. So when you see that, you know that's in this file right here, syncore.js. So the first thing it does is it wants to create a valid URL. Um, and it's it's going to take basically a, you know, an object and a value. So the, the object is request command. So that's just the word request. And then it'll put together the equal sign and then what it is you're requesting. In this case, we're going to request sample data. And that's going to create a valid URL. And then I'm going to use that URL and pass that into another library routine I wrote called make Ajax request. So it's this simple. Now you just pass in that URL and then you pass in what function when Ajax responds, where do you want to pass the data? And in this case, I want to pass the data to create sample data, which is right down here. And then it's going to get the result data, and it's going to take that result data, and it's going to use another library called that's really just a wrapper for the eval, the JavaScript eval. And that just takes the data and turns it into an object that makes it easier to parse, which means on your NetBurner code, you want to be passing in well-formed JSON objects. And we will also take a look at how that is done. And then I do two things with it. Really, this first one is just for demonstration purposes. Inner HTML has been deprecated, but it still works. And I have a little diagnostic tool I use that takes a JSON object and, and just kind of walks through it and creates HTML so that you can see what it looks like. 
and uh, dollar sign if you've never used prototype. That's their shortcut for get element by ID. So that just finds a, a tag with the element ID object sample, gets its inner HTML and assigns description to it. But the more interesting one is, and the way I think things should be done is right here, where it's going to use some other routines to add text to the nodes. So there's a node with a tick ID, and these are all just constants that are defined up at the up at the top. So here's tick ID. It's just called tick, and then uh, random ID, and it's just called random. So it's going to take and put that data in that ID. So if we go back to index.htm and look at it we will find those two IDs. Here's the table, sort of the empty table, and here's one cell that has an ID of tick and one cell that has an ID of random. So that's all that's going to happen here is it's going to add that data and it's going to happen every time the timer fires. So then let's take a quick look over at the, the Syncor file and uh, take a look at make Ajax request up here. And um, it, it you can look there, it does some other things but the basic function you can see is it's going to look for an ajax.htm page which is the same technique we used in the white paper you can see that over here um, it's just a callback to this method called ajax callback and then on the forums we talked about how internet explorer um, aggressively caches ajax requests and there were some techniques for adding random numbers or adding the time and and really this is the preferred method is to add this uh, request header section to your Ajax call so that's in the library as well so that you don't have that caching problem. So that makes the Ajax request and, and gets it sent back to you and that's the basics of what you need to know and to navigate. Um, there's the prototype library or support scripts and there's that all in the HTML and then over in the, the Netburner source code we most of, most of what goes on is inside HTML services and, and then, of course, there's also these uh, HTML C callbacks. So these are the, the calls you'll see in the um, HTML page itself. So right system varsity JavaScript we looked at, and here's Ajax callback. And all it does is call process an Ajax function. Um, so let's go to that. And well, first we should look at, <laughs> to understand this, there's a, there's a C++ map, uh, which is a standard library item container and uh, that map gets set up with the sh basically the strings that are the URLs so request token is just the word request so request equals machine state is going to call this method right JSON machine state uh, when it asks for sample data it's going to call this method and when it asks for debug options it's going to call this method so if we go back to process Ajax functions all it's doing is um, it's making sure the request token is there otherwise you're returning an error and then it's just going to go and if it when it finds a match it's going to call the function associated with that match right here so I might as well look at the sample data which is what we've been talking about here's right sample JSON data and we're going to create a well-formed JSON object that's going to have two properties one's named system tick and one's named random value and we're just putting that together here so we need an uh, open curly brace you don't need these white space characters it's just that if you print them out the way you saw me print out the machine state bar they look nice on the HTML but um, uh, we're going to add time tick as the value for the system tick property and we're just going to call this method get random number and that's going to be the value for random value then we're going to close off with a curly brace and in between the two properties there's a comma and that makes a well-formed JSON object now you can have much more complex ones and there are a couple examples in here where you can add arrays and all that so um, any good book on JavaScript will give you all the details and you can probably pick up a lot of it just by looking at the library so that's pretty much it so to recap our index um, HTM page loads our, our, our style sheets in our JavaScript and then that allows our um, our support scripts to run which does our do load which kicks off our timer which does this call to call back net burner which makes our Ajax request and then when that gets put down here to create sample data and then here you can see we're going to look at that JSON object that's created and we're going to look for a property called system tick and we're going to assign that into the tick ID and we're going to look for a property named random value and its value is going to put into random ID and that's all there is to it.